Hey everybody, so we are here today in Pine Grove, Pennsylvania. We're going to visit a place that we have before. There's Chuck in the background over here at St. Paul's Lutheran Church. And across the street is Gunkel Cemetery, which is a place that we have visited uh, before. Actually, uh, my relative Roger made me aware that this cemetery exists. It's sort of, you go by as you come into Pine Grove, you'll miss it. It's what you would call, sorry about all the traffic, But anyways, he invited me also on Memorial Day of last year to come see a memorial that they were putting in this cemetery, being in my family's history is from this area and all that. But uh, this is what you would call basically a Revolutionary War or a settler cemetery because of the age being from, you know, probably the first burials were right around the French and Indian War time period. And I want to correct, I said, I forget what I said, it's not St. Paul's, St. Peter's, uh, I think, the Evangelical Lutheran, it is Lutheran Church, but uh, anyways, I want to make sure that I get that correct, but we're going to turn this around, we're going to check this out, the different stuff here, and then talk a little bit about it. There is one tombstone in particular that we want to check that's pretty cool, it's the first settler of this area, and if you think about back then, uh, the Blue Mountain was, in essence, the sort of barrier to the frontier during French and Indian War period. Topahawken Path, which is where present-day 501 goes over the Blue Mountains, that was where that Topahawken Path was, and that's probably where a lot of them would go from the side of the mountain, the south side of the Blue Mountains, over to the north side as sort of the frontier expanded northwards. And that's just sort of how it operated. But uh, this is one of those cemeteries that has the first people that sort of were in this area at that time. And it was, it was anywhere you were on the frontier was an extraordinarily dangerous period of time just because of, you know, Native Americans weren't happy with the settlers because they were moving into their territory, were disrespectful to their beliefs and how you were supposed to function with uh, nature and earth, not taking more than you were supposed to or what you needed and that was just sort of one of the things where people just sort of came in and and not all the settlers were like that but there was a general attitude of disrespect towards the native americans you know they talk about that these people were savages they were the wild men or whatever and these people were just trying to protect what was theirs for you know centuries if not thousands of years and all of a sudden these guys come in and are like yeah we're going to take all this stuff and not really care we paid the british empire but in reality, nobody paid the, the Native Americans in most cases. So anyways, we're going to go over to this cemetery and check this out uh, for a second time. Talking about a few of the unique features of it. A lot of these uh, cemetery stones, they're not really readable. I mean, you're talking things, you know, these stones are 250, 280 years old. So it just sort of is how these cemeteries are. Uh, and then we'll talk about the unique feature, especially here. Uh, with there being the wrong bronze veteran plaques, which I'm not actually even seeing those plaques right now, so maybe somebody noted that and took them down, but we'll see that when we go over there. But Cliff had been here with the Wandering Woodsman channel and had noticed that his, his video was titled something along the lines of, something is not quite right at this cemetery, so we'll go through that and check this out again. So the first thing we see, this is the new memorial, and they have... All, I think it's primarily, it looks like World War I, World War II, and Vietnam, that they have the individuals that uh, served in the area. Because I'm sure it's not all these guys gave their lives, because, and this would be like the Pine Grove veterans. My dad's on the Ravine Memorial, which is down, down there in uh, Ravine. But really, really beautiful. They actually had, I guess they had like a band here and everything that played the uh, military tunes and all that kind of stuff. It's very, very cool. And this is called the Gunkel Cemetery because it was the Gunkel family that I believe donated the land. Uh, but there you can see revolutionary soldiers, early settlers buried here. And that was dedicated in 2006. I do see a few of these bronze markers, but I don't see as many here as had been. And that's probably somebody noted that and realized it. I'm going to go up this little hill and make it move while I'm at it. But uh, it's just, it really is. There's so much history. And there's St. Peter's as well. 
beautiful old church in sort of like right up against the hillside uh, I'd love to get in there uh, at some point to go see a service and then see the stained glass from the inside it has to be extraordinary but that was I believe at one time it was a combined I see here I think it, that looks almost like a Jacob Gunkel and that would be in it. There is a memorial stone there that talks about why it's called Gunkel's Cemetery. But here, here's one here, one of those Civil War. Um, I don't know if they're bronze or whatever they are. It's just the stone. Now there's no writing on that one that I can distinguish, but it's Revolutionary War clearly. And for some reason, they just have the Civil War ones. I mean, there's some mistake made there. This is, looks like a Dr. William Smith, native of New Jersey. He was born in 1802, departed life. Looks like 18 something. And I can't tell if that's 30. I doubt it's 31. Uh, he was 51 years old, so that would be probably be 53 then. a very important person there Dr. William Smith once again a lot of these stones are very hard to read they actually seem to be almost better than the last time and there's one that's probably the foot stone there and the other one's the headstone and another thing of note as well there's probably a lot more people that were buried here um because you have these opening spaces it's just stones that over time just fell apart and I can't quite make out the last there used to be when I was here the last time there were a ton of those bronze like stars I see one over there back in the back that looks like that's Civil War as well but there were a lot more because there's a lot of revolutionary soldiers here and I think somebody probably came maybe saw Cliff or I's video because I remember the first time I came here I was trying to understand I was like what in the world is going on here that's 1730 and it looks to 1817 I believe once again you know the stones are so old you just lose uh, over time they wear down and you can't distinguish necessarily and a lot of them as well you got to remember this was primarily an area that you had German immigrants so a lot of them are written in German you can't read German so unfortunately one we'll check out the settler then the first settler because uh, I thought that was so cool the first time we came here it was like wow uh, just look at the carving there's this sort of cool it's like a tree or something like that. in memory of Michael son of Henry and Mary Zimmerman born 1822 died 1851 and he has James can't really tell it's like whereas you know not who, what shall be on the morrow for what is your life it is even a it's sort of hard to read but it's not from James book of James in the Bible some of these inscriptions on these tombstones sometimes when they have either like poetry or the scripture that they picked out are just so appropriate and just beautiful and it just really touches you I hear they actually have it it's cool I have a plaque there Margaret Shank wife of Peter Click June 1803 to October 1851 and by the way it's a beautiful day one thing that's sort of funny I have which I feel bad about it but like a number of people says like stop filming in the wind I had the one day that I actually had available to me that I could go out filming of course it happened you know it's either large vehicles or right where I'm filming helicopters or wind seems to follow me wherever I go and uh, sort of brutal sometimes but that's a pretty neat look there. I don't know if that's intentional. Where it almost looks like vines are growing across it, or if that's just, I don't know. Back at this stone, I just wanted to take a quick picture of that because sometimes then I forget to 
take pictures of these things and and then regret it later and it's too late to go back because I travel as much as I can but it's sort of hard and I'll tell you some of that you can tell like you say it was like a popular symbol at the time or something you know it's done by the same carver uh, but the stones are just beautiful now it almost looks like a Emanuel Zimmerman carving on these is just extraordinary this is a beautiful day it's like it's that early spring about the spring or spring has sprung and it's just it just feels so nice there's a johannes almost like a wine rick if they definitely have it they missed a couple of them it was bronze thing but somebody did something about that somebody else saw the stuff was wrong there's a ton of Revolutionary War soldiers here. It's just unfortunately. I guess it's Gar, Grand Army of the Republic. And the guy's 1764 to 1849, so obviously he did not serve in the Civil War. Just one of those things, somebody made a mistake, but you credit people for wanting to honor our veterans in that regard. So there's a last name Berger. This one over here sort of intrigues me a little bit. It's got a lot of writing on it, but I'm sure it's all German. You can see that's how hopefully you guys can see it on the face. That's how neat that is. Can't really read it, but Johan Buke or Buck. There's Elizabeth Zimmerman. 1794 to 1815. It's amazing how many people. I mean, it was bad back then, but like how many people only live like 30. 30 years was so common. There's Katerina. I love that name. Not quite sure what. The last name is Rebecca Christ. A friend and I were just talking about a gentleman that we worked with. That his last name was Christ, and he was not the nicest guy in the world. There's another Katarina. is in German but uh, yeah this is this is such a cool place Dunkel Cemetery uh, it's one of those cemeteries that's right here along 422 going in Main Street Pine Grove and uh, so much history here that one is deeply cut stone looks like a Michael not quite sure what the rest is there but And we will go here to last but not least. Yep, this is the site of the first reformed Lutheran church, 1782 to 1817, donated by Jacob and Susan Susanna Gunkel. And then there have the thing, the Revolutionary War pattern. Which I think that one there, they do have one on that's right, but there's another one that's correct as well. But there's probably 15 to 16 of them in here, and the vast majority of them are wrong. But anyways, so that church has probably been here for a very long time, whether that's the first church or not. But that would have been the whole thing, the Reformed Church and Lutheran churches that we've discovered through our videos together and our adventures. A lot of them always 
combined forces usually for first 50 to 100 years and then the reformed church would usually go off and have their own building built then and all that but that was another return trip here to Gunkel Cemetery. It was a lot of fun revisiting this place with you guys. And uh, as always, thank you for coming along, and we will see you all about town. Hey, I just want to say thank you for watching the video. If you could please like and subscribe. If you haven't already done so, that would be great. And uh, we also have a Facebook page. We have an Instagram page. Uh, if you'd like to support the channel, there is a Patreon. Uh, there are ways of contacting us uh, at thehometownhistorian at gmail.com and also via mail at P.O. Box 143, Anvil, Pennsylvania, 17003. All that information is on uh, the descriptions of each video and also in the about for the channel. So thank you once again, and we'll see you all about town.